All right. Guys, thank you so much for coming and stopping by the Frame.io booth. I know that the main reason that you're here is because of my presentation and how awesome Frame.io is. OK, let's be honest, Frame.io is maybe the reason you're here. But anyway, uh, my name is Patrick Southern. I'm the lead editor and producer at LumaForge. If you've not heard of LumaForge, maybe you've heard of the jellyfish. And if you haven't, it's 10 feet that way. You can take a look at it here in a second. Um, and we've got like 16 of my coworkers here who can uh, happily answer any questions that you might have about said jellyfish. Um, but I'll get to that further here in just a little bit. Um, you're probably here to hear about uh, content creation, right? So I'm going to talk about a project I worked on with my friend Vince over here uh, a while ago called Captain Carl's Institute for the Abnormally Bizarre, starring Daniel Stern. If you've ever seen Home Alone or listened to the uh, dulcet tones of Daniel Stern on The Wonder Years, uh, you will appreciate what an amazing actor he is. He, he was uh, the lead in the show. And um, we had this really interesting opportunity when making the show to work, you know, whatever workflow we wanted to work with. We were a small team. Um, and I really prefer to edit in Final Cut Pro 10. Uh, but there's a lot of questions out there about, OK, well, if you're using Final Cut Pro 10, you know, uh, Avid's got bin locking, and Premiere's got shared projects, and Resolve's got its collaboration. How do you work with a team in Final Cut Pro 10? And uh, we actually found out a pretty great system that involved multiple Final Cut Pro 10 libraries and uh, a LumaForge Jellyfish, which is this little black box here uh, on the desk that allows you to connect multiple editors at the same time to the same media. And it's super simple to set up, so simple that uh, we were able to set it up without any technical assistance. Uh, I mean, now, mind you, I do work at the company, but it is really extremely simple. It's about three clicks to get set up. And then we were able to put all of our media onto the server and then place uh, our Final Cut libraries on the same server so that we had uh, the ability to open each other's libraries when necessary and pass things back and forth. But instead of just talking about it, I thought uh, it might be good to show it to you, right? So here we've got a scene inside of Final Cut Pro 10. Um, and I think that we're pretty close to done. I've done the assembly edit. And I've got uh, maybe a few tweaks that I need to make. But I really want to have a, a review with you guys to see if there's anything that we think we absolutely need to change. Are you guys open to giving me some feedback on, on what we need to do for the review? Awesome. Very cool. All right. Uh, let's take a look. Mm -hmm. Well? Well what? You know. Carl. Captain Carl. Captain Carl, you know I can scare somebody. Well, it's been a while since you walked away from this place in search of greener pastures. I need to know that you have still got the chops for this. Too good for Carl's. Big mistake leaving. Groveling now. Go to hell, Maurice. Look, I'm not going to waste my time planning some big scare or wearing some weird mask just to get a job that... Wait. Does someone open your extremely dangerous, super hazardous live animal container? What? Are you F word serious? Yippee, <laughs> jeebies! You are still the best in the game! You start tonight. Cool. Ho ho! That was a good one! Good to be there. Oh, I love it! All right, so did anything stick out to you guys about that edit that seemed a little bit off? No? OK, well, for me, it was a little bit weird that he falls out of his chair and then all of a sudden ends up back in his chair in the same, like, 0.5 seconds. So the question that I have is, do I have a take that can give me a better performance uh, that is congruent with everything else and has him actually on the floor? Uh, now, my assistant, uh, Trevor, told me that he'd found a clip and had favorited it so that it was uh, quick and easy to find. And he's left for the day, so I don't have to worry about opening his library while he's using it. So let's just pop over into Trevor's library real quick. And we'll see in scene six, here, I'm going to give ourselves a little bit more space. In scene six, I'm going to drill down, and I've actually got all of the lines from the script right here. My assistant is very helpful. And what is our problem line here? We've got uh, 
Let's see. Heebie-jeebies. Okay, heebie-jeebies is the line we need to replace. And hey, look right here, we've got heebie-jeebies, and it looks like there's a favorited portion of the clip right here. So let's do this. From, uh, from Trevor's library, all I'm going to do is drag the clip into my library. And it's going to ask me if I want to include my optimized and proxy media. If you're not familiar, in Final Cut Pro 10, you've got the ability, instead of working with the camera originals, you can create optimized media, which is essentially just ProRes 422, or proxy media, which is a lower resolution version of the media, which is really helpful if you happen to be in a place where you know, you're working off of USB 2 as opposed to USB 3 or something like that. So we'll go ahead and hit OK so that everything passes over properly. And uh, now our assistance library can be closed and he can have access to it. And I don't have to steal it from him any, anymore. Um, OK, so let's hop into line 16. And we're going to sort by our favorites. And uh, I believe this is it right here. He's on the floor, so let's go ahead and pop out the old version of the clip. And we will pop in the new version of the clip. And. Uh, <laughs> Let's, uh, let's take a look at the scene with this new version of uh, the take. Wait, did someone open your extremely dangerous, super hazardous live animal container? What? Are you f word serious? <laughs> Heebie jeebies. You're still the best in the game. You start tonight. Cool. Ho ho! Oh, that was a good one. Good to be oh, I love it. So we were able to very quickly, because we were on shared storage, move a clip from my assistant editor's library to my library like that. Something that's not quite so easy whenever you're passing things back and forth across multiple different hard drives. Um, so that's, that's really helpful and is great whenever you're working in the same location. But sometimes you don't have that opportunity, right? And in fact, during production of Carl's, I ended up going on a business trip and had to be out of town. So I took an entire copy of the media with me. And Vince and I were able to pass uh, review links back and forth. And so I was able to send him a cut. He was able to give me notes inside of Frame.io, which was great. Um, but Vince is also an editor and was cutting together a scene here or there. And so we were passing XML back and forth via email as well, which can be cumbersome over time. However, this last fall, Frame.io was able to get into uh, Final Cut Pro 10 with their new workflow extension. Workflow extensions just came out, uh, I think it was November of last year for Final Cut, which now allows us to upload and download XML uh, to and from each other, but it also allows us to send media up to Frame.io from within Final Cut Pro 10 and download proxy versions of that footage directly from Frame.io. Um, so yet again, instead of uh, just talking about it, I'll show you. But I, there is one other thing I do want to talk about, which is the fact that when you're taking these large 4K files and you're trying to get them up to the cloud, sometimes you don't have the fastest internet. Now, mind you, at our office, we actually do have some pretty fast internet. But even then, uploading a day's worth of dailies in 4K can take quite some time. So it's quite useful to have a tool that allows you to transcode to something that's a, a little bit lower resolution, but still usable, right? So we ended up using Kino to, uh, to do a number of workflows this last fall that, uh, that allowed us to work remotely. And it was interesting because we didn't just have that piece of it, right? Kino allowed us to take the cards from the camera and ingest to the jellyfish using checksum verification. We were able to log the footage directly inside of Kino using things like real scene, shot, take, and add any sort of tags that we wanted to that could then become Final Cut Pro 10 keywords. And uh, then we could move those things from Kino into Frame.io. So let me show you that real quick, OK? Um, so here in Kino, I've got day two of my dailies. And you'll see that the footage looks pretty nice. Uh, but I only want to send scene four. Actually, Vince, are you OK? Can I send scene four to you to, to take a quick stab at? OK. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop in here. And I can actually filter by uh, fields beyond uh, you know, just 
size, date, folder. I can actually get some beneficial things like what scene I've got. So I'm going to search for scene four. And you'll see that immediately I get all of scene four's video, because I've filtered by video as opposed to audio. And let's see, if I open the clip up inside of Kino, I've actually already got the LUT applied for the camera. So uh, it looks really nice. But Vince, you're, you're a really smart guy. So I don't know that I need to necessarily include the LUT. So let me go back out to my footage. And I'm going to select it all, right click, and go to the camera LUT. And I'm going to select none, because you know how to apply LUTs in Final Cut Pro 10. Gives us a little bit more wiggle room, right? So now that I've done that, I can right click. I can deliver to frame IO. And as Robert was showing in his pre uh, previous presentation, I can either send the original files, which is the full 4K file, or I can tra transcode the files. And I've actually got all of these presets that are pre-populated by Kino, or I've created a custom 2K H.264, which will give us something that can be delivered to either cinema or television and still be fully acceptable because it's not degrading the image significantly, right? So um, let's pop back into Final Cut Pro 10. And um, I'm going to go to my Frame.io view uh, so that you guys can see what it looks like to work with the uh, workflow extension for Final Cut. So this is my Frame.io extension right here. Uh, you'll see that I've got my footage already up here in the cloud. Um, and I can select a clip, and I hit spacebar, and I can play it back. It doesn't have any sound, though, because uh, we were shooting dual system sound. So the camera wasn't recording sound, uh, but we did have time code and some other things. So I was able to uh, synchronize things within Final Cut Pro 10. So the question is, uh, what's Vince going to do with all of these dailies uh, if they're not synchronized? Well, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked. Um, I think what I'm going to do is, uh, Trevor actually went ahead and synchronized everything, and he added the various uh, lines of the script uh, to the event as well. So I can now take my entire Final Cut Pro 10 event, and I'm going to drag it to the Frame.io extension. And what it's going to do is automatically generate a Final Cut Pro 10 XML that includes all of the synchronization information, um, all of the beautiful favoriting and rejecting and keywording that Trevor had done previously. And now I've got uh, the ability to open up uh, Vince's uh, library here, Carl's remote. and I can take this Final Cut Pro XML and I just drag it to the library and it's going to import that entire event into Vince's library here in just a moment. So now we've got that library uh, filled with the event that uh, I'd created earlier and everything synchronized. You can see here that we've got the synchronized clip icon next to everything. And uh, so Vince, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close this library so you can work with it real quick, all right? Um, so as you can see, it's very quick and easy to uh, send things over to people who are working remotely. I don't know what, Vince, do you have the edit yet? I mean, oh, OK. Vince just told me that the, uh, the, 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 uh, the scene's ready. He's already cut it. Um, I don't know why he brought me on as his editor if he's that fast. Um, OK, so let us drag his new XML into our projects. And uh, just like that, we now have the scene that you just edited somehow in like 15 seconds. OK, so let's pop over here and uh, let's take a look at the scene that Vince cut. That's right, we open at 7 o'clock, just in time for the shadows of the night to emerge from behind the red moon and immerse each new victim in an unimaginable nightmare. Yeah, 7 o'clock. All right, see you then. <clears throat> wow. Mmm. I see you work for the company. That could be a red flag. All right, last one. I'll throw you a softball. You're in a room with three light switches, each of which controls one of three light bulbs in the next room. Your task is to determine which light switch controls which light bulb. All lights are initially off, and you can't see from one room into the next. You may inspect the room only once. How will you determine which light switch 
controls which light bulb. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a pretty impressive uh, edit there, Vince, in like uh, the 15 seconds that you had. Um, I'm actually very impressed. Color on me, very impressed. All right. Um, well, that was the basis of how we were able to collaborate. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys have about how you can pass information back and forth between multiple libraries on a Jellyfish, or how to work with Kino, Frame.io, and Jellyfish to uh, allow for remote collaboration. Thank you guys so much.